All right, guys, today is a surreal landscape. This beautiful feather that's got an outer space sky. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I want to welcome you to a fun and surreal landscape. We're doing a beautiful soft sunset over a lake and then there's this lovely feather that's just floating in front of your face that shows you a completely different landscape with stars and deeper sky later in the night. I really liked how this came together. This is a composite so the I got the sunset off of Unsplash. The feather I drew up myself and laid onto this and put, had put in the background uh, digitally on my iPad. So this is a put together reference, but the reference is listed right up there or showing right up above my head and on the actual printout that you have available. This is available on my website at deliberatelycreative.com for free and we are going to just get right into this I think. Good morning everybody, afternoon everybody, evening everybody, whatever time it is, your time of day, thank you for being here and for spending some time with me. I really appreciate you. This is day 29 of Acrylic April. The theme or prompt was feathers or feather and this is what I came up with. Something a little bit different. Yeah, it is kind of cool, isn't it? We are going to go in and put in the background first. So this lovely out of focus landscape background, we're using the Turner Acryl Gouache again, just because that's what I seem to settle down on. I have white, Prussian blue, permanent yellow deep, permanent lemon, carmine and sky blue. No black, at least not yet. I do have black sitting over to the side that I can use or sitting somewhere. Somewhere here I have black. There it is. <laughs> and black. I have the, my brain always loses the name. It's Holbein acrylic gouache if I run out of white, but there's not a lot of white in this particular painting. We're going to go ahead and get our landscape colors out. Hello, hello. So guys, um, being that this is almost the end of the month, <laughs> I'm going to be getting ready to do some fun doodling and painting and projects or with different materials. But this month I have done all acrylic and I will be doing a flip through on Friday this week of all of the paintings. I'm a little scatterbrained right now. I don't feel like I'm all here for some reason, but, um, so yeah, I'll be doing a flip through of all of the paintings. And if you're a patron over on Patreon, I will be listing the super secret special password to get to the sale page for all of these paintings that I've done this month. You guys on Patreon will have first go at the, at the paintings for it will be going, the, the post will be going up after this video. So on patreon.com forward slash deliberately creative, I will be posting for paid patrons, the link and the password, because there's a super secret password that you have to have to get into the sale. And then on Friday, after the flip through, I will take the password off of that and it will be open to everyone. So, woohoo! <laughs> Am I excited to be at the end of the month? I'm excited and a little sad, you know? It's a little bit sad, but I'm excited for all of the things that I have ideas for, for the coming, for the coming month. 
It's like, I've got, oh, I've been looking at some string embroidery on paper. So it's kind of like doing the 1970s string art, but you punch holes and you follow a pattern around with the embroidery floss. You can make beautiful things. Ah! I almost missed coming into the live show today because of that. <laughs> Not really, but pretty close. It was five minutes after 12 and I looked at Mark and said, uh, yeah, I've got a live show in 10 minutes, don't I? All right, so I've got my big one inch Simply Simmons flat wash and I am going to get this paper wet just to move the paint around. This is a reflected sky sunset. So the horizon, wherever we plant that horizon, it's similar top and bottom reflected. So get the paper wet. I'm just going to move that out of the way. The traceable pattern, that's really more to get the feather on. There we go. So now the mail carrier just arrived and my Turner Acryl gouache is in there for the white that I ordered. <laughs> yeah, the, you know, two days to the end of the month is when it finally arrived, but that's okay. All right, we've got wet, 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 wet water on there. Wet water. What is dry water? <laughs> if water isn't wet, what is it? It's just air, right? So I'm taking some sky blue and some Prussian blue and mixing those together. We're going to give a nice band of that right up here at the top. And then we're going to do the same thing down here at the bottom, sky blue and Prussian blue. I'm going to sort of try and work my way towards the middle. And by wetting the paper, it allows that edge to not be too, too hard. Yeah, I have tons of embroidery floss. I think that, you know, everybody goes through those stages of, ooh, I can, I can embroider all the things, right? Then we have embroidery floss. Or pearl cotton works also. All right, just want that to be nice and soft. Now I'm going to take some of the Carmine and the Prussian Blue. Ooh, that's pretty. Maybe a touch of white into that. That makes such a pretty purple. I want to go on the very outside and get, get that purpley tone going in and then work it back and forth. I'm working side to side on here, just keeping it wet. Now I'm going to go with more of that carmine and a little bit of that deep yellow. Get almost an orangey color. Used to have some dried water. All you had to do was add water. That's absolutely right. Ian, nice to see you. Let's get that water going here. Just working that. Working towards that horizon in the middle. Whoa, I'm splashing water all over the place. Let's see about slurping some of that water up so I don't totally contaminate my white. That's why I work with paper towel. And you let the paper towels dry out and you can still use them. It's not going to transfer any of the color onto the brush. So cool. Now I'm going to take more of just that yellow deep, but just a touch of that red in it. See, we're getting, ooh, pretty. Kind of a rainbow. 
And I think this now, I'm just going to work these two colors together and then we'll get the dark going across wherever we want it to be. And I'm just going to boom, 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 work that up and work that down. We've got this lovely blended, blended colors. How's that? Yeah, you, you might think that I'm taking a bath in this for how I splash. I'm going to go ahead and dry this. Then we'll put in that horizon line and the hills in the, in the background. I think I want to do that. And if I want to lighten up any areas or make some clouds going across, I can do that as my next step. So I'll just get this dry, take a look at the fun stuff going on in the chat room. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. You know, we just have to find ways to be interactive with other people. And this really is one of those ways. But yeah, I've been looking at doing some, you know, abstract watercolor and then doodle on top of it. There's a lot of that out there on uh, Pinterest and on just in general. I've been just taking a quick look and it's like, whoa, no such thing as an original idea. So many people doing the same things, but that's okay. You know, it makes us happy and it gives us an opportunity to use our supplies. This is almost dry. And you see how it kind of dulled down the colors just a little bit uh, as it dried. There we go. <laughs> we don't have to, our, our songs don't have to scan, you know? Ah, well, hey, so we've got all kinds of fun friends coming in. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to go ahead and make my dark color that's going to go across. I'm going to do that with Prussian blue and the carmine and a touch of the yellow because every color is just a combination of red, blue, and yellow, you know, so if you have a black, it might lean more towards the red or the yellow side or the blue side. It might be a really purple black. This could be a really purpley black, but by putting all the colors together, you're actually doing, you're, you're doing color theory. You're putting all of the colors, you're putting all the complementaries together to give you your black. So I'm looking at this going, I don't want to be exactly half. I want to come down a little bit and I'm going to take this on its edge and just sort of go sort of straight across. Yeah, sort of straight across. It's a little downhill, isn't it? That's okay because we have this reflected mountainy bit that going goes down. This is our darkest tone. Yeah, it really is going downhill. But when we go like this and give ourselves the other side of the mountains, boom. And up. Give yourself the other side of the hills. You could stop right there. We could have a beautiful landscape already done, huh? Lovely sunset. I think I do want to put a little bit more, a little bit more color right down here near the, the horizon, but I can wait on that just a bit. I think we're going to go with a little bit of white and carmine make kind of a pinkish white color and we're going to 
start putting in a little bit of some cloud. It's going to soften up our soften up our sky a little bit, doing it softly by having the dark color in the background. It allows it to start building some shadow into it without being anything really difficult. I'm doing this as a kind of glazing with my white to make my clouds. I love all... <laughs> Hello, beautiful, creative people. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, we we watch a, um, a van life couple that are from Italy. And the way they open every show is, Hello, beautiful people. I like that because everybody is beautiful. All right, see, we're just stacking in some, some of that color, glazing it in. It's giving us a little bit more of a, a layered effect. And I'm still doing this with the flat brush, you know, you don't have to always go to the round brush. Although the round brush is nice. So down here where it's closer to the little mountains, actually working some of that color in that's on my brush, maybe blurring this out just a little bit. And that's the water, so I can actually take a little bit of that haziness onto it. Again, we could stop right there. We could have a beautiful sunset surreal landscape reflection over water. Wouldn't that be pretty? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. There we go. So now dry, dry out some of that water and I'll hit this with a real quick real quick dry with the the tool just to make sure everything's dry remember to click that subscribe button the like button the notifications turn on your notifications on the YouTube on your computer and in your YouTube app on your phone and tablet otherwise YouTube will not let you know when I go live <laughs> and I appreciate every every subscriber and every viewer even if you can't subscribe right now that's okay yeah isn't that pretty built up that that sky we've got those kind of floofy clouds without really being cloudy Woohoo! all right so now what I want to do is grab my let's see grab my chalk pencil move my paint out of the way so I don't put my hand in it. Dry the puddle of water off my table so I don't put my painting in it. There we go. So now we're going to put the feather on. You can absolutely print this out, put a piece of Sorol transfer paper and trace it on absolutely can do that. I'm going to show drawing the feather on just because, just because. Let's see if we can get that kind of lined up so you can see and so I can see. Now the feather is in this one third over here. If you took and divided this painting with two lines to give you one third, one third, one third going across, you want to have your thing of interest, whatever that is, person, animal, flower, feather. You want it where it intersects with one of your one third lines. So my feather is actually, I'm going to put the center of this feather going right here on this one third line. 
your eye just naturally goes to one of those spots. And if you have lots of interest or something small, you want it to be in one of the one third this way and one third this way. So you want to make sure that your intersection is either down here or up here for your interest in general, in general. Ah, uh, well, Amy, you have fun. Enjoy your day. I hope that you get to have fun. Enjoy the fun. And if it's not fun, make it fun. Find something to give your heart a lift. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to take my, this is a General's White Charcoal Pencil. And I am going to go like this. And boom, make a decision. And I have my feather going all the way off the painting. So the, the spine of the feather, the shaft, the shaft of the feather is going to come all the way off. And feathers aren't always, how did I get red on my hand already? Don't lick your thumb. <laughs> Do you know how often you lick your hand, you know, you lick a finger to move something. I have been paying attention and not doing that. But boy, so hard. We're so used to it. Hands in the mouth. Don't know. Rubbing your nose. Long hair <laughs> in the face. So this center bit right here, it does not go all the way out to the very tip of your feather. The, um, this feather has the little feathery bits that are split. They would be stuck together. They have little scales that stick the feathers together, but sometimes they come apart. Now, when the feather is all stuck together, it would be one solid line coming down like this and then coming into the shaft. I have to remember the words. <laughs> but I'm going to say that the shaft down here at the bottom, these feathers are a little bit separated. But by doing it this way, I know where my feathers are supposed to go, where the edge of the feather is. Now on this side, I have it sort of broken up a little bit. I may not have drawn this feather exactly right because I have part on, part of this feather is sticking out farther, but it could just be that this edge right here is curling back away. Could be. So I'm going to leave it. <laughs> Feather is split apart and then you've got your little ruffly bits at the bottom. Boom bitty boom. Now I want, I do want to put my horizon line in here, but I don't want it to be exactly, well I don't know, you tell me, should I line that horizon line up exactly and use the landscape that's already painted there in the feather? I don't think so. I think I need to paint the feather in all dark and then we go from there. I will let you guys tell me what to, the quill. Thank you, Ian. Yes, it, it is the quill. I, but I thought the whole thing was a quill because quill is a type of feather that that's on a bird. So you've got flight feathers and quill feathers and the downy warm feathers. I don't know. I'm I sound like I know what I'm talking about sometimes. You know the imperative word there was, I sound like I know. <laughs> All right. Well, I am so far behind on the, uh, in, in delay. I will talk about my shirt. Guys, looky. Look at my shirt. It matches the cover of my coloring book. And at the top of the chat, my shirt is actually 
um, pinned up there so that you can have an easy link to Teespring to get this shirt. It's one of my floral mandalas. And it is available on Teespring on shirts and mugs and all kinds of fun things. Ah, thank you, Katie. I'm the artist. I will decide. All right. The artist decides that using a smaller flat brush, I am going to make a, or just use the dark blue and fill in the feather. <laughs> go for it. Decide later. There it is. So I'm going to go ahead and just use that pointy brush, not pointy brush, a uh, flat brush because it makes it easier to get those flat, sharper lines. And we'll just paint this in all dark blue. Remember to leave your splits, those little spaces, those gaps. It just makes it feel more like, oh no, you're filling me up with, you know, the, the thing with tea, Teespring is being a business in this time. <laughs> How long ago was that ordered? I may stop promoting my shirts if they are taking way, way too long. But Katie, I could see that you would definitely need a fill me up with coffee t-shirt for all the lovely coffee quotes that you give us in the mornings on Facebook. So I'm just filling in the feather with the Prussian blue. And if I move quickly enough, I can actually use that not quite dry blue as a feature. I'll be able to get the paint to blend a little bit. I just have to make sure and not put my arm in my paint. And then I'm going to take that spine, the, the quill part of the, that feather, and get the little fluffy bits down here also. I like that, I mean, really and truly, you, when you're working this size, you don't use hardly any paint. I have really not the only paint that I've kind of run out of is the white. And that's pretty kind of went off center. That's okay. It's got a bigger, bigger bit right there. <laughs> Putting your arm in the paint does appear to be part of my process. Yes. So now, while the paint is still sort of, sort of, a little bit wet, I'm going to go in and use the use that to my advantage because I want to get some colors in here. So we've got this white that's sort of going all the way out to the edges, lightening up that sky, going all the way back to the blue. So I'm just pushing it around, glazing. We're glazing it in and making this kind of a cloudy nebula type of sky, like a sky on another planet. 
I'm going to take a touch of yellow and work that in. You can't even see it. I may have to put a little bit more yellow. It's called I can see it, but there. Let's let's zoom in. We can zoom in. We have the ability to zoom. Let's zoom in. So, touch of white back into that. Cloudy, cloudy, cloudy that up. We will put the little mountain in last. Touching my face again. Take a little bit of that sky blue. Mixing that into it. Touching a little bit of white again. All right. Letting it break through, have some of that dark coming through also. We're just working our way all the way up the feather. Getting some variations in those little nebula colored clouds. We'll add more white into it. Oh, my white acrylic wash came. <laughs> it did. Mark just... Okay, guys. Boom. Look at that. That is... That is a certainly a huge amount of white acrylic wash. <laughs> I'm not going to run out for a little while. Yay. All right. So now I am going to go and, because I don't need to put any more gouache, white gouache out. By putting the white, though, on top of that carmine that's on top of that blue, we're getting more of that lovely, lovely purpley color. And I'm just working it all the way out to the edges. I want it to look like... It's a feather-shaped hole in the sky, basically. That will do. Yes, that will do for a while. Just get that lovely, lovely shaped, feather-shaped hole in the sky. A little bit more white, maybe a little bit more of the carmine right over here. All those fun nebula clouds. We're, we're going to carefully dot some stars in. They're not going to be splattered on because I want them to, to actually feel... like they're they're very special. I'm taking some more of that blue because I want to break this up just a little bit and let it cloudily cloudily blend. <laughs> blend and blur as much as makes you happy. Don't you know if you want to just say I'm doing a dark blue feather and put a few little dots of clouds on it or dot, dots of stars. Put your little landscape on. You can do that. So I do need to put a little bit of this reflection because it is kind of the, the same landscape, but it's not. So let's put just a little bit of that reflection down in there. Take a little bit of the, the yellow to make my green.
and just fill in my fill in the feather it's like coloring book you know you can once you've got a shape that you can color in you're good you're good to go I do want to take some of the blue and sort of tip it in just a little bit. Clean up my edges, but feathery, softly. Not, not a hard outline. I'm not doing a hard outline. And I want those to just sort of softly blur into the surreal landscape. From Brassy? Greetings from Brassy. Oh, they erased. All right. <laughs> from Brazil. Hello from Brazil. Thank you for joining us. What is the weather like in Brazil at this time? You know, everybody's got different weather going on. You know, I'm going to make a really dark color again for down here at the bottom. We are warm ish. I mean, for some people, our warm would not be warm. We're going to be about 74 degrees today, I think, but it's supposed to get a little bit rainy this afternoon. But this is like one of the driest Aprils on record. They're saying it's probably going to be the fifth driest April that we've had in a, you know, ever. So let's see, this is going to be a softer blue going across and my feathers growing a little bit. That's okay. Grow your feather. If it does, you can do that. Well, yeah, I know that we're not that warm compared to a lot of people. Our, our warm is like their nighttime lows <laughs> and that's okay because I don't have to live someplace where it's too hot and you don't have to live someplace where it's too cold. It's fun. We have the ability to live wherever we want to, but that we can go and visit those other climates. Let's see. I'm going to lighten this up here a little bit more. And then we're going to put the little stars on. Come on. A little bit more. Maybe a little bit of yellow into it. Ooh, that went bright. That's okay. We can work that around. There's some of that there. And then I may put a little bit of it down here. And just start brushing in just little bits. because we can. Ah, yes. Being at home can be um, a challenge for a lot of people, but since I work from home all the time anyway, I found that it's a challenge for me too. <laughs> I think it's the Knowing that you shouldn't go out, even though I ne hardly ever did, it was like um, knowing that I shouldn't. I just picked up some more white. I'm really just playing and trying to lighten up the sky. The, the picture that I've got in the reference, that was done dig digitally. The feather was a digital feather. So I'm trying to make this 
all come together. I've got a, do I have a hair on my hand? Thought I saw a piece of hair. I don't know. Weird. There we go. Just get that and then take a little bit of the, not that much. Just a bit. I want to purple it up right there. Soften it in. See, you can layer up as much as you want to get this to look like you want it to. And I think I'm feeling like this is getting pretty well layered in. Soften those out. It's too brushy. While it's still wet, you can. Now you could do this with acrylic paint, with the acrylic gouache paint, with regular gouache paint. You are not limited. You can do pretty, pretty feathers also with plain watercolor. You're just going to work with the white of your paper more. Just want to soften that. Soften, soften. Ah, there. Okay. I'm not messing with that part anymore. Now what I'm going to do is take a, let's see, where's my dotting tool? Had one sitting here. Sorry, I'm reaching across and looking for a tool that's supposed to be somewhere. Oh, well, you know what? I will just find a, oh, that's what I can do. If you don't have a regular dotting tool, go and grab a toothpick or a skewer. Dip it in your white paint. And then put your dots on. Look at that. You can dot. And the, the lighter you touch, the smaller your dots. And the longer you put dots on, the smaller your dots will be also because you'll have less paint. I want that one to be bigger. So I'm just going to dot that heavier. You could put actual constellations, but remember, this is a surreal landscape. And then I'm wiping the paint off. Use a toothpick. Absolutely. This just happens to be a very long, long bamboo, bamboo skewer. And now what I want is to pull out the tiny little sparkles. So I'm just going to take a palette knife, something that's got a super thin edge, and I'm going to see if I can draw it out. I may have waited too long. My paint drops might be dry already. They're dry already. Wow, that dries quick. Well, I am so glad that this one is speaking to you, Miss Katie, and have a lovely, lovely day. All right, so, no, I don't want a yellow. <laughs> hmm. Well, maybe we will have to take the liner brush and work very, very carefully with some very wet white. I'm going to, to just sort of slip in here. Just touch with the tiniest little very light, very, very light hand. And if you can get it to just be like one or two hairs that are hitting, that's even better. Just a couple little sparkle stars. Not too many. 
and I might do a couple that have basically just a soft cloud around them of white. So let's see if we can sort of blur it out. Oh yeah. So we're going to blur out around this also. Those tiny little refraction type lines, the spider lines. I have to move my foot. <laughs> have to reorganize my body from time to time. I'm going to blur that out around those just a little bit. So it's like they're living with a bit of a cloud. Just a little bit, you know? Don't don't be too too worried about it. I think I'm going to put let's see some of that dark. There we go. Just a touch of light. See if I can make some of those little the little feathery bits a little more feathery feeling. There. Get a few of those fluffles down here at the bottom. Sort of like on a peacock feather. You know how you get that really super fluffy stuff down at the bottom? Very good. That's kind of what I was going for was that, that uh, gateway, that gateway feel. All right, we're going to take the blue and the carmine and a touch of that deep yellow and more blue. We're going to get that really, really deep dark color again. And I'm going to put my horizon for this one a little bit lower. And then we've got the bit that's coming down. I think I am going to actually put a reflection of one of those big stars down here in the water because I want to. <laughs> so that one is going to be right there. The other big one is a little too far away or too, too high up. It's not going to show up here. And then Not soup. You don't want this to end up being too bright. So after it's after it's dried for a minute, I will go back in and do something there. But I think we're going to take some of that white and the blue, and we're going to put a little bit of a separation line. Maybe there's actually some water reflection. There was a little bit of wind that blew through. It's going across that there. Sometimes you just need a little reflection and I can take my flat brush over that and sort of soften that out just a little bit. The, I think this is just after the sun has gone down, but I want a little bit of some of that, that pinky purplier color right down here, 
with a touch of white in it. And I'm just using the liner brush because it's small tip, too bright. I can see already that was going to be way too bright. There, that'll be darker. I just want to get this color in. And right now that looks really dark. I'm going to take out that one star. This is just making it so we can see the mountains just a little bit. Okay, so I need to take my flat brush and sort of brush that in. I just had black in my brush still. That's okay. We are okay with that. Little bit, little bit, little bit. Wipe the brush off and take out by just softly feathering it in. Look at that. Just feather it in. Boom. Now you're seeing more of that. You might even put a little bit more white. Maybe there's a little bit of a something happening farther back. Maybe there's a little light glow from some alien alien world. There. See, you can just... I'm, I'm going to go across that one. Ha ha. It was looking a little too bright. <laughs> it's a little too bright. I wanted that one to dim down a little bit. So there. It's so easy to just change this up and get a completely different feel if that's what you want to do. Make sure and leave a little bit of light down there by the mountain. All right, guys, I need to finish up this little bit of fluffle in the sky. I'm going to put a couple little stars. I, I want star there, but I don't want it to be quite so bright or big. I'm going to just take my dirty brush and run it across my white reflections. Put a couple spots of stars back in. Maybe there, ooh, maybe there's a moon, moon rising. What do you guys think? Moon rising? Should there be a moon rising right down here? I think there's a moon rising. Far away moon. Ooh, yeah. Oh, okay, so I just keep, I just keep playing, don't I? I want to try a different brush. Try a different brush. See if a different brush will give you a different effect that you like. A little bit of pink in that. In 
enjoy the process. Enjoy playing with your colors. Enjoy adding things, taking things away. Say, ooh, maybe I want that one going more across. Layer your colors. Maybe a little bit more white down here. Remember that I am that person that will keep playing. But I think today I'm feeling like if I play too much more, it's really going to end up needing way more work. So I'm just going to go in and wipe off my chalk with a wet brush around the edges because I'm reminded by my husband that I keep forgetting to do that on video. So I'm just taking a wet brush, wiping off the chalk, because there's the chalk that's down here in the in the little feathers. I may go ahead and clean up a couple little edges. I'm spinning my brush. I'm, I'm rolling my brush in my hand as I'm putting paint onto it. And I need to make sure, get that water drop so it doesn't drip onto the painting. There's a couple things. I want to make sure that there's more of a split right there. I want to show that that split actually came down right there. Clean up that little point. Give it a little bit more of a dark edge right here. Just cleaning up edges. That split comes down like this. Actually cuts into the landscape. There, see? Just clean up those edges. This is something that I would probably do after the fact if I didn't do it now and I realized it. Just like yesterday with my cute photo bomb, there was a patch of bright yellow <laughs> on the cheek of the camel. And uh, one of my very observant community members went, hey, did you fix it? It looks so much better. <laughs> It was like, yay, thank you for noticing that I fixed it. And thank you that, yes, it, it looks a whole lot better now. I'm taking a little bit of that sky blue. Right up here. And right there. Kind of working it in just a little bit. Good afternoon, Miss Mary O'Neill. I just saw your name go pop by. So there, you got a shout out today. All right. So if I don't stop here, I will continue to play. And really, it doesn't need any more, except for cleaning up that little edge right there. Maybe bring that down, down in a little deeper. There. All right, let's sign this puppy and put the... Uh, 
No, we're not going to sign it yet. I need to soften those edges. I need to. I, 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 I have to. I don't want it to look like it's outlined, but I did want it to look like it's sharpened up. So there we go. Stephanie's on it again. Soften that out. Soften that out. All right. Thank you. I appreciate that. I I wanted something pretty. I wanted something easy. You could do it as difficult as you want it to be. You could do it as simple as you want it to be. There's many stopping points where you could stop on this painting process. Signing it is a good thing. I'm going to sign it. I think I will use the sky blue maybe. I'm going to sign over here, give it a little bit of balance. We're going to pull the tape off and it's going to be fantastic. So move the paint out of the way. Go to the wide screen. There we go. Ooh, that's already really pretty. Even before we pull the tape off. Pull the tape at a sharp angle away from the paper so that you don't end up with it pulling your paper off. Guys, if you could please share this video with your friends. Share it on your social media. Pin it on Pinterest all of the things, all of the places, that really helps me out. I am going to take a small amount of white and I will be cleaning up those little extra burbles. The nice thing about white gouache, it covers over and it dries about the same white as the paper, so it's very very unobtrusive. You really don't, don't notice it. Just like that. We've cleaned up those really big burbles. I hope that you guys will try this out. Thank you so much for being here. Remember that doing something creative is the best for your mental health because then you're in a good place so you can be in a good place for those around you. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I hope to see you back here again really soon. Yay! Bye-bye. <laughs>